Okay, it's okay. nine o'clock. This meeting is called to order. Approve the minutes of the previous meeting. Have y'all had a chance to read them? Um. Am I starting too quickly here, Matt? <laughs> no, I don't think I have read them. Okay. Are they the, is it just from the one meeting? Yeah, just from the one. Yeah, let me breathe through it okay. here. Yep, looks good to me. All right. Okay, Bill, any comments? No comments. I okay. Uh, Minister approved as presented. Let's go on to City of Springdale special. Okay. This is a unique election. We haven't ran one like this before. <laughs> so there are a lot of different people involved because down to the city of Springdale, Bethel High, our county judge, and the county judge as well. So all four of us. Um, so basically, um, I have the ballot ready for you to approve uh, today so we can go ahead and get the absentee set. Um, I have sent this ballot uh, both to the city of Springdale and also to Kim in Denton County so we can make sure our ballots yeah. are similar, um, you know, with the layout and everything like that. So I would just need your approval on this ballot so that we can go ahead and start uh, prepping for absentee. If you will notice, there are new voter instructions on this ballot. Um, one of the things that we'll talk about with the absentee voting, the SBEC rules, uh, Daniel kind of tweaked some of the, he didn't tweak them on the ballot, he tweaked them on like an information sheet that you would have received with your absentee ballot. But I thought, why not just put them on the ballot? Um, and the main difference in what we've done in the past is about if you change your mind, make your selection clear. We've never put that on there, and you, you know, yeah, you guys have had to yeah. review ballots before and try and interpret what did the voter mean because they can't get a second ballot. Right. And so, if they change their mind, they need to make sure they mark it out um, and clearly and say, "Hey, this is the one I want to vote for." Mm -hmm. So we went ahead and put um, those instructions on this ballot. We'll continue that practice for the general election ballot as well. But that is one change just for the voter instructions. And then, of course, the language came to us from the, from the city. Right, which I think is striking since it doesn't have any legal stuff on it. So I went back to look at other annexation elections, mm -hmm. and basically they said the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's basically just for or against. Mm -hmm. So the language is very similar. To, uh, to what would be. Of course, we will post at the polling location a copy of the ordinance that we received from the city, a copy of the uh, document calling for the election from the county judge, uh, so that there is more information for the voter. And of course, we'll put it on our website as well. That's good. Okay. The voter instructions are not, I'm surprised the law doesn't verbatim state what they should be. It's kind of surprising, um, right? It, it, it's sort of discretionary. Well, so there are parts of the voter instructions that the law does prescribe. So, for instance, when we get to the general election ballot, the part about where it talks about measure, race, question, all of that is actually in the law. Um, and but we're in this new age now, where most counties used to have. Uh, election day paper ballots like these traditional mm -hmm. and you had absentees. Well, the instructions on the traditional paper ballot were always geared to the voter at the polling location because it said it, you know, go to the vote, go to the election official and you can exchange your ballot. That's what the law has laid out for us to put on the ballot, but we don't have these type of ballots at the polling location and so they're strictly going to voters um, who are receiving an absentee. Yeah, got so it. So we took part of 
part of what the law requires us and then change that part about requesting a replacement ballot, you can't get a replacement ballot, which we felt was confusing to the voters. Yeah, definitely. So in Daniel's um, rules, he did kind of clarify some of those instructions for the voters filling out their ballot. So we just felt it was appropriate to go ahead and place it on the ballot itself. Sure, if we can do it, I think it's I think it's great to clarify it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We need all the clarification we can get. Sure. Anything to help the voter. They help us. Yeah, well, true. <clears throat> okay, well, I would entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor. Ballot is approved. Next item, vote center locations. So this is the part of the election that is different than any other election because technically the county judge will appoint the polling location. Um, obviously we will submit the location that we would want to have open and then the judge will sign an order setting those locations. Um, we need to open one vote center in each of the city wards. Uh, so I've identified those as um, Oak Grove, um, the Church of the Nazarene, Elmdale, and uh, the Rodeo. All of those sites for this election are pretty big enough to, you know, for mm. facing needs, and they are spread out over the city and they're in each of the wards. Um, I have heard back from Elmdale, Oak Grove, and Nazarene that they will be willing to be open for this election. Rodeo has a board meeting on the 15th, so she just has to wait oh, for okay. approval on the okay. 15th. I don't anticipate that that they will that they will hunt us down, but I actually won't have that until until then. Um, what I will do is make up a notice of election just like we've always had, and then present it to the judge for his approval, and then for the commission as well. Um, I think four polling locations is plenty sufficient for mm -hmm. for this election, uh, but I don't have that nailed down just yet. Okay, um, you, you're running all this by uh, Brian as well. Yes, basically I go through Brian okay. and then he submits it to to the judge. Okay. Um, but I've also, so basically I go through Brian, but I also go through the city attorney for Springdale mm -hmm. and then through Kim too, so that we're all working <laughs> together on everything. So many moving parts. Yes, <laughs> yes. so we're all, <laughs> we're all together. And basically the order that Benton County signed calling for the election is the same mm -hmm. as our order just with, with what they need in it so that the election is seamless. Okay. Bus, comment? Are we good with these polling locations? I have no objection. Sounds good to me. Okay. Well, let's let's proceed. I don't think at this point we need a a vote, do we? No, we don't have anything for the for the commission. There's Sorry. really not any hesitation about rodeo. It's just the meeting to, for approval. Yes, yes. I think it's just really <clears throat> just a formality. Um, they're they're meeting on the 15th. And I think it's more of a formality now because of the, the COVID-19 and everything they're wanting, you know, they haven't had anything there. Um, and oh, wow. so I will, I talked to Laura yesterday and she said that they're meeting on the 15th and she'll just add this. I also am giving her the dates for early vote and election day as well so we can just get that all covered yeah. at the same time. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. All right, uh, then we move on. COVID-19 supplies needed. So for this election, um, we will not be able to use any of the supplies that the state is procuring for us for the general election that all have to be used in November. Um, so we will need to come up with the supplies for the polling location for that. Um, and we have asked about um, the plexiglass screens because those obviously could be used. They're not like right. a one-time right. thing. The question is, will they be here in time for an August election from the state ordering them? 
Um, I don't know that they will, and I don't know that the state will even purchase enough that we need. So if with the commission's approval, I'd like to go ahead and get at least two, like, two of those plexiglass screens for each of the polling locations. We'll just run one check-in, and then that would provide I mean, one supervisor. I mean, I think we'll, I yeah. think we have 100 voters at the polling location. I, I just, I right. don't see that right. we would. Yeah. Um, and then we would also need cleaning supplies, um, masks, gloves, and then if we want to do the, the stylus for the selection, mm -hmm. it looks, hopefully the state is going to purchase what we need for the general election, but we would need to purchase these for the August election. And um, if the commission will approve that, I can go ahead and, and ask about getting, getting these. So I brought in a sample for you to see of what the style looks like. Yeah, what they look like. They, um, that email on the what did you say? These are a nickel a piece or something? So they are, um, if we, if the state, if we do a big order, they're 0 0.57 cents a piece. But if we want them in the little wrap, yeah, it's 0 0.65 cents a piece. Oh, wow. So it doesn't go up by a whole lot. Yeah. Um, but that's how much they are. Yeah. So with this special election, you know, on the one hand, it's a little bit, it's a, you know, it's an extra thing to do while we're planning for the November election. But on the other hand, this is really an opportunity for us to test out all of our COVID-19 procedures prior to the November general election. So I actually think that we could use this as a great opportunity to really test every piece of it out with the caveat that this is a significantly smaller election than the November election. But if we can, it's you know, practice. it's a practice <laughs> run. Let's, let's do it exactly how we're going to do the November election, Jennifer, mm. with the style, styluses, styly, whatever, uh, with, you know, personal protective equipment. Let's get, I suggest getting the full, you know, getting, don't limit yourself on the plexiglass screens to just two for four polling locations. Let's just get enough for those locations that we could reuse them for those same locations in November. And let's really try it out and, and really see how the procedures work, you know? And I also think the more poll workers you could get trained to work during this election, I'm not saying to overstaff it, but the more folks that you get out there who can go through these procedures, they're going to be ready to roll then and a couple months later. So our plan is, um, because we are only setting up four locations, our plan is to actually, we will actually set the site up how we want it to look. So we have already talked to the supervisors. We will meet the supervisor at their polling location the Monday before. We will oh, set up the yeah. tablets. I brought it in for you guys to see today. We'll set up the tablet and the printer, the printer facing out so the voter gets this. We will set all of this up at each location for that election, bring those supervisors and poll workers in while we're setting up and do the training there that day. And Max, your idea is a great one. I'd already kind of talked to some of the supervisors about that. They had the same thought. We will bring in, we will rotate in supervisors and assistants at the polling locations from all over the county. Oh, yeah. That's a great see idea. How we have it set up. That's a great idea. Um, and so the ones we can't catch, obviously, we'll bring here at some point and do training with. But for them to actually get to see the polling location, how we set it up, to get to see how we how we do this differently. Yeah, that was our thought too, to use this as kind of a, a test to see how we're gonna do the COVID-19 procedures to get our poll workers some experience on it and make sure everything will run smoothly for the general election. So that, that's kind of been our working plan uh, to do it that way. Are you gonna be able to have enough time for one day to rotate everybody in? Um, between the four sites, 
there's a good possibility we can. The ones we can't, the ones that are like smaller locations that we probably won't have open, or some of my different supervisors, I we will bring them in to the courthouse at some point to do to do training with. Um, but there's a really good possibility that we'll be able to get quite a few in. Um, just you know, even if they stop by for 30 minutes, right. yeah, to actually see how we have set up and see the different procedures. And if you can really set it up exactly how you want it, and then write that down, and maybe Picture. ask well, somebody okay. to make a manual based off that exactly, and they picture. Yes, yes, we will. And that was our idea with it just being the four open. We are in charge of setting it up, yeah. so then we know this is, this is how we want it to work. In terms of supplies, I'd say order them now. Let's get them. Right. Yesterday. There's, yeah, exactly. There's there's no reason to wait. If you need our approval to order supplies for August. What kind of cost are you looking at? Let's um, talk about it, yeah. So on page 39 of your, of your um, packet that you have, the plexiglass shields, if I'm not ordering a large quantity, I think they're like $60 a piece instead of just $54.95, depending on, on what I order. Um, the stylus, that will either be five to 10 cents a piece. I'm hoping if the, the state puts in their order, then I can just order it to a side order, basically, off of the state. Um, and then, um, ballot stock and everything like that, that's, that's, um, we have that stock on hand for that. But the plexiglass shields will be the most expensive part of it, probably at around $60 maybe a piece. And if we got four per size, then that one. Yeah. Well, now, um, I guess the question is, especially since we've got stuff we're going to need before the state ever comes through. Um, is the state, I mean, what's their attitude towards saying, well, you've got enough for da 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 da, or, um, or we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna um, reduce your wh what you call, you had a you had some sheets of preference on how many you needed right. that you submitted to them, and are we gonna get? Uh, <laughs> I guess is what I'm wondering. I don't think they can because they have been very clear that anything we use in August cannot be from oh. what they are providing oh, for us okay. for the general election. Okay. So I think a case could be made just because we purchased this, we purchased it for the August election, not for the general election. So um, I I don't think we get we will get deemed. Um, I think, in fact, we probably won't be getting everything we need yeah, in the state yeah. anyway. Yeah. So this will just supplement okay. what we would need in November. Yeah. So yeah. Most of these you're going to use up anyway. Hand sanitizer, stylus. I mean, yeah. those things will be yeah. gone, right. right? Right. It's just the plexiglass shields that will yep. carry over. But the more we have of them, the better off we are. Yeah. Are we going to make Are we going to make poll workers wear masks all day? So my thought on it is, if every single person wore masks all the time, from what I understand, we would be out of the woods on this thing in no time, because masks prevent the spread of it. If you wear a mask, it prevents you from giving it to somebody else. So I I feel strongly that we should make all poll workers wear masks during the election. And I think we should vote. I know a lot of people, myself included, who would not feel comfortable going into a polling location if the poll workers are not all wearing masks. <clears throat> I would suggest that we put this off uh, for now. I'm, I'm not comfortable uh, requiring, we don't know what's going to happen in August or November. And I, I think that um, the data that we have right now is not complete enough to suggest that this is what's going to happen in August 
or November? I don't think there's any question it's still going to be here in August and November. I mean, that's a certainty, right? CDC, WHO recommends wearing masks. Those are guidelines to wear masks to prevent the spread of it. That's the tool, the tool that we really have at our disposal. I mean, social distancing, washing your hands, hand sanitizer, add in masks. Those are the things we can really do, right? Uh, I, as I understand it, there's uh, some disagreement on whether masks are effective. So, um, so worst case scenario, we all they all wear masks and it doesn't have any effect. Best case scenario, they all wear masks and it prevents the spread of COVID-19 to anybody in any polling location. Well, my or on a limited limited basis. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, and uh, to be cautious is good but we're premature to make a decision and call on that till we get further down the road now. If you're looking at August the 11th, that's another matter. But if you're looking at October, uh, November, early election, right, and, true. Yeah, and I think that really. we've got some time to make that decision. I set the thing play out a little bit. I don't know where it's going either, but it's been up and down a dozen times in the last four months. So. I wear a mask most of the time when I'm in public. The meeting like this is not as critical because I don't feel like anyone in this room is sick. Okay, now I don't know that. I, and I don't know it either. I don't think that I am. No. But, but I don't know for sure, right? I, I think that's a tough call this far out, personally. Yeah. Well, the, re the reason I don't, I disagree with you guys that it's a tough call and that it's this far out is because we're talking about ordering supplies right now. So we're talking about getting the supplies for the August election. And I think we have to make the decision whether we're going to require full orders to wear masks because we have to order the supplies now to make sure that we get them. Yes, I will tell you that if we, if I go ahead and order masks today, um, we would still be, we would still be needing them for the general election. My understanding is, and I'll know more, we're meeting a, again next week with the Secretary of State's office. My understanding from the Secretary of State's office is the, the types of masks they're using are reusable. And so I don't think we are going to get a, a sufficient amount of masks from the Secretary of State's office because they're just looking at our straight poll worker numbers. So if I say I have 300 poll workers who work during early votes, they are thinking one mask per poll worker kind of for the full two weeks. <laughs> it's not going to work. I know. So <laughs> I think that ordering masks now, we if we don't use them in August, which we can, we definitely would use them in August. Whatever we have left over, we will definitely need for the general election. So it won't be money wasted. Is what it, it kind of is what the, the point is. It will not be money wasted on the map. Trust me on that. Because even at that, if we had mass left over from what we ordered for the August election, and let's say because you can only order them in certain quantities or whatever we have left over, if we had extra mass. If we were able to offer them to voters who maybe wanted to wear a mask, that's a good thing too. So I don't, it won't, it won't be money wasted. Um, you know, especially if you had a voter who was like, I'd really like to come in and vote, but I want to wear a mask. Do you guys have any masks available? Kind of like when you go into Whole Foods, yeah. there's someone there passing out masks yeah. if you want them when you go in. So I, like I said, I don't think we would be wasting money to go ahead and order masks now, regardless of what of what the state provides for us, it will not be in that So I think I think offering extra masks to voters is a great idea. A lot of restaurants are doing that, right? And that's because it's mandated to wear one when you go in a restaurant, but uh, restaurants don't have to offer them and they are offering them. Uh, so the state, state is ordering masks for poll workers for November, but we think at we think maybe there it's going to be a limited supply yes, at this yes. point. Are they washable? They're reusable. You said they said they're reusable for 15 days. I yeah. I <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but if I was a full worker and someone asked me to wear, a, unless it's a cloth mask, I could take home and wash. Yeah. 
I would not feel comfortable wearing a mask for 15 days that I can't wash. Yeah, I agree with you. You're going to want to wash it. Yeah. Yep. So I don't know exactly what type of mask they are. I'll know more next Wednesday. But just from that bit of that conversation, these masks would not go to waste. I'm going to throw in one more point here. We all saw what happened in Georgia. Fiasco, right? with the election. And I'd like to talk about what we can learn from that and make sure that doesn't happen to us. But one of the things I understand is new voting equipment. That's not going to happen to us. But they lost some poll workers, I understand, too. And so poll workers are just members of the public. And some poll workers we know are not going to feel comfortable coming in and working at our polling locations. I'm uh, based on what I've seen. I think that if everyone is required to wear a mask in that polling location, a lot of those poll workers are going to feel more comfortable coming to the job and not calling in and canceling on us if everybody else is wearing a mask and they know that that's required. The poll workers. So I think this matters for the voters, you know, but I think it also matters for the poll workers and us being able to hold the election. I, I think there's a few of these things. I mean, I want to get on top of this thing, right? so that we don't have trouble in November and that, you know, we can see a few of these things happening. I mean, you got to think about, I think you have to think about the worst case scenario and plan for that, that it's really bad. The numbers are very high here in November. We don't know what's going to happen, but you got to plan for the worst. Poll workers could call in, feel uncomfortable about it, and then we'd have to close polling locations potentially close to the election maybe less time than typical um, if the governor allows us to do that. And just, I just think anything we can do to make sure we don't lose poll workers and we maintain faith for the voters and the integrity of the process and they feel comfortable and safe coming in there, I think we should do it. I think maps are, are a piece of that puzzle. Uh, have, you, uh, have you polled, polled your, uh, some of your supervisors and poll workers at this point, which is obviously uh, pretty far in advance, but uh, what's the uh, consensus there? The few that I have, I've reached out to probably 10 of like my better poll workers uh, or supervisors, not that they're not all great, but like the 10 that like I kind of rely on to go to for, you know, for like how do we do things and it's a mix response mm -hmm. is what I've got. Some, yes, with spiked masks. Some don't think they could manage wearing the mask all day. That's kind of part of their fear is wearing the mask all day. Um, our, our doctors and nurses do it, you know. The poll workers can do it for so, a day. So, yeah, it's just kind of a mix. But I think that I don't know if... I don't know if we said you have to wear a mask if anyone would just right. be like, That's the question. I'm done. Yeah. You know, this I was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. Back. So I don't, I don't know. And each polling place is kind of its own unique group of mm -hmm. people, you know. And so some of them, because they supervisors have recruited their friends, their friends yeah. they all have that same opinion. And other ones, we where I have mixed groups of of people in. It's kind of different. So yeah, so I don't know. I think I think the cloth mask, like what you have on masks and like what I have, would be easier for poll workers to wear all day than the uh, medical grade ones that you get from that we're gonna get from the Secretary of State's yeah. office. I don't think we'll get those oh. right, but no, we won't. I think they're harder to breathe out of. I feel like the cloth ones are, are easier and more um, comfortable. Now, I am not volunteering to do this, but Kim <laughs> has been making flannel oh. masks for her poll workers. Oh, my God. Uh, Thank she you. has okay. that talent, and I do <laughs> not. Boy, she needs to go get her, isn't she? Yeah. Good for her. Oh. Did she, have you priced cloth masks for yeah. poll workers? They're not. Um, I'll have to ask. Um, I'll have to ask my husband and see how much they were 
Um, he orders them for his office, like with Constellation stuff right. on it and everything like that. And I didn't feel like they were that expensive. Mm. But I almost feel like I may put the word out to our poll workers. A lot of them are in the, um, mm. oh, what is it called? Not home ed, but it's um, like 4 H and like different like, education. Yeah, different things uh, like that. I may put out the word to them, like, hey, Make your see how many in your group can make their own mask. Not that we wouldn't provide them for you, but I think they may feel comfortable wearing a mask that they make themselves mm. that mm. they know is comfortable. I know I know there's a lot of our poll workers that sew. Um, a lot of them do that type of thing, and I'll kind of yeah. start putting that word out to like if you know someone in your group that can make four masks for your poll worker. You know, because I think yeah. they. I think they will. And that's kind of what Kim's doing. Kim just kind of started doing it. It's just like, hey, I can make these. And is that in, in Benton County, is she using that as a voluntary thing or as a requirement? Uh, I don't honestly know. I know that she provided them for them for the uh, March mm -hmm. election. And in March, it was like a, it was like a little different. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I know that they were provided masks. Um, I know the other thing that they've been talking about too uh, is the face shield yeah. um, for right. the poll workers. Right. And I think the um, state is looking at the face shield as well, well. If we had the plexiglass, that's essentially the face, the face shield, shield, right? Yeah. That's right. that. Piece. Well, on your schedule of items needed, I don't see face masks on here anywhere. Am I overlooking? Yeah, I don't either. You do, I don't have it on there because um, one, I think if the state may purchase them, they're a little bit harder to come by, and so I, I felt like well, and I don't have masks on there either, just because the mask and the and the face shields, I knew the state would provide for us, so I'll source those. I mean, and and get those for the August election. Um, but yeah, I don't have the pricing here for that. Well. Are you seeing any indication that the supply is there available? Yes, the state has been getting them in, and I think they're. I think you're starting to see them open back up for more and more places. Like every clothing manufacturer, there is is making, making them. My husband, like I said, my husband ordered the ordered the cloth ones for his office and had them in like three days. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I've I seen think, I've seen a significant number of advertisements now that they're available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I think mm -hmm. sourcing that actually. And the actually, price probably is coming down. Yeah, it's actually going to be a little bit easier. Well, let's talk about overall costs here of items that we may well be responsible for. Is this for is this item for uh, November or this for, is for November? Number five. Okay. Yes. Um, Wait a minute, where are we? Number five. Agenda item number five. Oh, uh, which we've gone all the way down there. <laughs> uh, well, that's. Well, I don't know if we actually have. That's just the list of. Well, yeah, I was looking at. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. You only put things on here that the state's not going to pick up. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, that yeah, makes sense. And this is, of, this is for November, not August. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I will source for got us. Got it, got it. Uh, both cloth masks and the disposable mask and see what the I mean I just want to make sure that we get them and we have them in and that you know if poll workers want to wear their own masks that's absolutely fine you can wear whatever masks you want right I don't uh -huh. think it, it really matters I feel strongly that we should we should require poll workers to wear masks these are our, our county employees we're setting the policy for the election and for what the poll workers have to do and don't have to do. Washington County has led the way in so many different areas of elect running elections and election law in state. And I think we should be a leader on this front too. And I think this goes along with it. Um, this is our big chance to test it out and to try out our procedures prior to November and August. And I feel strongly that we should make poll workers all wear masks. I'm not sure that we can require that of voters uh, from a legal perspective, but we can of the poll workers. That's different. So, so I don't. So I I suggest, and I can make a motion that we should order masks for the August election. I'll make a motion. 
to add that to the list of items purchased for August so that we have them when it gets here. You have no idea of costs. Honestly, I don't, and I'm sorry, I don't have the idea of the cost. I don't think for the number of poll workers we would be bringing in, I don't think that the cost would be significant. Um, and even if I ordered masks for this election, let's say let, let's say I spend three hundred dollars. That may be too much. Four hundred dollars. You're talking about August. For August, okay. let's say I spend three to four hundred dollars on mask, and and I try and get like the cloth, like the the ones that could be reused. Um, even if we didn't use them for the August election, well, if sure, the commission sure, yeah, decided right. not not to do it, um, there are plenty of poll workers who will want them for the general election. It won't be a cost that I'm spending that we won't use. So you're going to use them. Exactly. You're going to use so them in a heartbeat. If the commission decides that the that the poll workers need to wear them in August or not, I know that we will put them to use. So I'm not wasting money. Well, the yeah. other side of that is that the poll workers who feel that this is a necessity will already be wearing a mask. Possibly, or some may want to or ask if we're providing that. Yep. Oh, you, oh. You know, as the if, employer, if we get asked, yes, people you're supposed to, as the employer, I mean, to, to, you know, typically provide to the employees PPE, I mean, anything that they need for the job. Some of them may bring their own, but. I suspect many of them will, if they feel that necessity, will bring yeah. their own simply because they don't, they're comfortable with a mask that they're familiar with. Whereas a provided mask is like a different level of um, comfortability and maybe of um, not quite the fashion statement they want. And that's fine. I don't, you know, who cares which one they wear? Well, Jennifer, you need to calculate the number of masks that you potentially will need for our commission to purchase for all three elections. For August and November. Well, yeah, if we're going to have a shortfall, do we know what the early vote and the November vote yeah, it's a, needs are going to be and or what's being provided? Yeah. So I will know yeah. more on the 17th. Oh, okay. The, we, like I said, we're meeting on the 17th for the SOS's office and um, we should be getting an email shortly after that with kind of a list of the things that we will be getting for the general election, and that will let me know where we do have shortfall. Okay. Um, so um, we can go, I mean, we can wait. I can go ahead and source and find out what the cost of the masks are and everything and have that ready for us. Um, I have our next cleaning day this July 15th. That may be too late That's to try and order yeah. masks. Yeah. But if you give me like a a number, like a dollar amount, I mean, obviously I'm not going to overspend on masks. I don't overspend on any anything we buy. But um, well, I, you know, I think that we could do a motion to approve the purchase of masks as required for the elections, subject to the cost. Okay. And then all you've got to do is find us out the cost and then email us, text us, or whatever, and everybody can say amen. No. no? If you I give think, me a dollar. I think we could authorize her to spend a certain amount on masks right now. Yeah. How yeah. much is that? I don't know. And I don't have my phone with me to Google. Okay. So we can wait till the 17th. I think, uh, I think it'll be too late. Well, what are you going to no, do? No, she talked our. We could uh, meet earlier. About the 17th oh, next oh, week. Oh, yeah, yeah that'd be. Yeah, 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 yeah. That'd be fine then. I yeah. think, right? I yeah. think we could source. And you'll it. know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So hopefully you'll. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Yeah, great idea, Bill. Okay. Let's just not buy a pig in a poke, you know? Right. Okay. Well, let's. Let's meet then after that because we after can't just we meeting. can't just you know meet via email. Yeah, I have no objection but, to meeting it. Yeah. You know, and probably there'll be other items that we need. Oh yeah, for. absolutely, I agree. By that time. Yeah. Why don't you do that? That sounds like a great idea. Source a few options, Jennifer. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. You want to meet next Thursday then? Um, no, unless we meet early in our. <laughs> this is total vanity on my part. I finally have a hair appointment. Oh, I'm sorry. you're not going to wait. Yeah, no kidding. How about Friday? <laughs> Friday. That's fine. Friday, the 19th? Maybe. Let me look at my calendar. Either way, it's either the 19th or the 22nd. I think one or two days is not going to. Is it 22nd to Monday? The Monday. Yeah. Let me look at my calendar. I have a hearing or two in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll tentatively plan a meeting to um, to revisit these different costs. Um, if you can get us more info on that. Pencil in on the 19th meeting. Maybe. I think I have a hearing that day, Bill. Okay. I think the 22nd. 22nd would be good. I mean, you know, yeah, I could do 22nd. Okay. The 22nd? Yeah. Lisa, will that work for you, the 22nd at 9? Okay. Um, I will go ahead, though, with your permission, though, about the plexiglass, because we know we, yep. we know we want that and the stylus. Really, it's just the mask yeah. yep. that we're kind of... Um, and if you're going to buy stylus, buy them in the cellophane package okay in my opinion mm. i'm good at that sir you know yeah i mean that hadn't been opened yep people have a comfort zone You're right that's a, that's a great that's a good point for sir. no more right cost the cost is, is very mm -hmm. negligible yeah, yeah. okay um we'll talk about that later uh okay you've got meetings scheduled on the 15th august the 13th and august the 20th any so um, yeah I wanted to provide these with for you for your calendars to make sure that these meeting dates are good the one I do have um, August the 21st was our initial date to do our ballot draw sure. we were going to do it at 9 o'clock in the morning but we have to wait for any overseas ballots to come back for this August election so my suggestion was going to be if we wanted to just do the certification at one and just do the ballot draw at the same time at, at one o'clock rather than doing it at, at nine, if that's okay it's with Friday, the, right. it's a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. if that's okay with the commission. I see. Uh, on the 21st. Yeah, that's fine, I think. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Right. Okay, coordinator and county clerk meeting review. Um, I provided everyone with a summary of the meeting and I sent it to all of our Northwest Regional um, Group. The uh, one great thing was having Kurt uh, from the Secretary of State's office kind of explain how the CARES money was going to be spent. Basically the state is going to purchase as much as they can up front. They will not give us any grant money. We will be seeking reimbursement for items that we purchased um, that are COVID-19 related. So basically what that boils down to is I think they're gonna provide us with all of the election day supplies, masks, the cleaners, the stylus, the plexiglass, all of that type of stuff I think the state pretty much is gonna purchase for us. The thing we are gonna be responsible for purchasing on our own will be all of the supplies for absentee voting. Um, ballot. That, oh, yeah. ballot stock and all. Yeah. Ballot stock, um, all of that is we will have to purchase. Then we will seek reimbursement from the Secretary of State's office, and that reimbursement will be will be based on how much money they have left over from everything they everything they've purchased. Um, like I said, I will know more on that um, after the 17th when we find out exactly what um, they will be providing us. So I'll be able to know what, where our shortfalls are. Like if, like if they're only going to give us 80,000 stylists, we're going to need to purchase more stylists. If they're only going to give us 100 of the plexiglass shields, we're going to need. So I'll be able to actually have better, cost, uh, better pricing of all the different things that we'll need. Um, but basically, we will be seeking reimbursement, I think, for a lot of different items. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also from the governor's office, he does anticipate that if the governor is going to make an announcement, he should do it sometime in August. And I think the governor actually was on television the other day, pretty much that same statement. If he is going to make some sort of statement, it will be in August. Um, but the governor's office will be back on the 
back in our meeting as well on the agenda okay. uh, so yeah, so it sounds like on the 22nd when we meet, you can have a fuller picture yes. of the cost that we oh, need to order. Yeah. for everything. Yeah, like, yeah, that's that's great. Yeah. Good. So, and it's been real helpful, I think, having these meetings with the clerk mm -hmm. and the Secretary of State's office. And it gave us truly a clear idea of how the state was planning on, on spending the money. Because at that point, we, we didn't know. Are you are you finding in these meetings that each county is relatively similar in what they're looking for, or have you seen some uh, diversion from that? Pretty much, we're all on the same page. Um, one thing we did start discussing that we hadn't discussed a lot was the different types of social distancing tools to use in a polling location. That was one thing that we are actually going to start looking at a little bit more, like whether it's the, the things that are put on the floor. Mm -hmm. Those are tricky because yes, tape on the floor and different floor types of floors. Right. Huh? So uh, that was, but the social distancing tools was something that we discussed, mm -hmm. like what, what types of things. One of the things was how do we control social distancing outside the polling location, which we can't. Um, but so how do we try and, and uh, you know, prepare for those types of things? How do we control it in the polling, inside the polling location? And uh, the mask, requiring voters to wear masks, that was a big thing we talked with the SBEC and the governor's office and, of course, the Secretary of State's office. They're going to help brands, like, put out messages that I don't think we can require voters to wear because a mask because it would infringe on their accessibility to voting. Is that but the is that the legal assessment that's the governor's pretty, office? Yeah. That it will will do that. Um, but we can recommend that vote you know, we want to recommend voters wear masks, right. but you cannot require voters to wear masks. Um, and so that was definitely something that, that we discussed and making sure that the Secretary of State's office and the different entities keep putting that message, you know, the different messages out there. We talked about the difference between uh, mail-in voting and no few absentee voting to make sure that, depending on what the governor says, that voters are not thinking they're automatically going to get a ballot mailed to them. That, you know, because that's not what no few absentee voting means. Um, so those were definitely some of the things that we discussed. And, then when we filled out our questionnaires, the five counties that were there, we pretty much did ours the same. So that we're like, so we're saying as a collective group, these are the five things we think are the most important for the Secretary of State's office yeah. to give us. So yeah. On that absentee issue, can you meet with Becky and sort of both take take an eye and look at as the absentee process and information for voters because I suspect. If it's allowed, there will be a significant number of first-time absentee voters for this election. I don't any, think it's any question. Right, Bill? And so I think anything we can do to streamline that process and make it clear, cleaner, clearer, and easier for them to understand as voters and for, for Becky's office to be able to handle them. Anything we can do, I think we should try to do that. Um, and I did. That kind of goes into the, the SBEC rules. Um, I've went and talked with Becky yesterday about our voter statement and mm -hmm. those voter statements, the one that we, we sent out. Um, I took a look at what the SBEC had recommended and pretty much cleaned ours up a little bit. You've got the one I would propose that we use. Of course, this is all Becky's office and what she uses in her office. But Page. Um, if you'll look on page 33, this would be our new voter statement that we would use. And basically, the main difference from the one we previously used is I've put, I've identified the different areas as boxes, which is what the SBEC had recommended in their voter statement, and also put on there the caveat that this is required for your ballot to count in each of the different areas so that the voter knows and then there would be a checklist for absentee voting that's on page 35 that follows along with the little boxes like did you print your name in box 
two, did you print your date of birth in box three? Um, printed your last valid address in Washington County in box four, did you sign in box five? So it just kind of goes down the list of uh, matching this checklist with the yeah. voter statement. So that um, if anyone is, is requesting an absentee ballot, um, that they have this little checklist and ours is just a, I just cleaned it up basically a little bit um, for the voters. Yeah, I think that's, I think it's good. I think I like it. I'm going to take some time and look through these and yeah, but this looks great, Jennifer. So, yeah, I think I just kind of combined what Daniel did with what we were already doing. Ours yeah. already had, what Daniel is proposing at the state board is better than what this, the original application that other counties were using. Yeah. Ours is more detailed, you know, we've got the red arrows to make sure the voters kind of know where they're supposed to sign and different things like that. Um, if you, uh, if you uh, would change this checklist for absentee voting a little bit, my suggestion would be to do the same thing you just did verbally. Did you? Yes. Oh, okay. With a, with yes. a checkbox, because otherwise um, it, it People are not going to quite, well, it's going to require ex explaining. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I can definitely. Make them in the, in the form of a question, they're more likely to go, oh, yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay. Check. Yeah. I think that yeah. is an excellent observation, Renee. <laughs> I do. Because I agree, if you just see this and you haven't done mm -hmm. it before, the checklist is great, but yeah. a little more explanation yeah. there. I agree. Right. Yeah. I can do that. I am going to leave the little boxes so that oh, yeah. you can mark the yes, box. Yes, definitely. I will put it, will put it yep. did you print your name in box two? Did yeah. you print your date of birth in box three? Right. Did you print, yeah. And or did you do the following things? Right, you know? yeah. 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 Yeah, I definitely can, can work on that and get that ready. Okay. Other thoughts on that? Now, um, earlier discussion you and I talked about um, these things are not actually uh, the SBEC stuff is not actually going into effect until after uh, January 1st correct so although some would be what implemented as uh, promulgated rules yes so if this in, in fact they're meeting today if this uh, happens these rules would go into effect after 30 days. However, he did put a caveat in there because a lot of counties have already printed their voter oh, statement yeah. and have already preset envelopes. Mm -hmm. And so asking them to just kind of toss all yeah. of that and use this new one in the middle of everything, mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of county clerks were kind of pushing back on that like we're already been prepping and we've already been working on this and everything like that um so i think that's why you put that in there that you can still continue to use your voter statements that you were using from this year um but i um I, we have the best county clerk becky is just so wonderful when this came out because becky was already printing and pre-stuffing off the yeah. And I asked Becky, I said, can you wait and let us look at this um, and see what Daniel says and what happens. And then once we kind of look at everything, then start stuffing again. And absolutely she did. She wants to make sure that, that everything is done for the voters and that the absentee ballot, ballot process goes smoothly. So yeah, so she's kind of on hold right now. Um, and obviously these are hers that she uses in her office. Um, I'll work up that new checklist and take it back up to Becky for her to look at and for her approval to make sure that she feels comfortable with it for the yeah. voters. But yeah, so these are all works in progress. Yeah. Um, okay. So any other thoughts on the SBEC rules? Y'all had a chance to look at. Um, how about the quantity to order for absentee voting? That's the question, Becky. <laughs> 
Because right now, Becky has 5,000 envelopes ordered. That's what she ordered for this year was 5,000 envelopes, anticipating 5,000 for the whole year. Um, I have 2,500 pieces of ballot stock. Um, and that's the question is, how much do we order? You have currently? Currently, 2,500 pieces yeah. of ballot stock. Uh, okay. that's, that's for the absentee. Um, so my question to you, to the commission, that because I think ballot stock we need to order now, the 1st yeah. of July, how much ballot stock do I order? We, we talked about 25,000 pieces yesterday with Becky's office. Do we order more? Because this isn't something that we can just order off of off the cheapo. Nope. I, can't, I can't just What's it. the cost? So the cost is, I've got it in the little chart. Um, it's on page 39 is the ballot stock cost. Um, if we um, a 10 percent absentee, uh, if we do a 10 percent increase of 10 percent, the cost will be close to three thousand dollars, and that includes the toners and the image drums for the for the printers too. If we all go all the way up to a 40 percent absentee voter turnout, the cost would be around ten thousand dollars for the ballot stock. You can use some of that for the next election, yes, 2022, yes. right? Oh, absolutely. So yes. So, I mean, I think you order more than you hope that you're going to mm -hmm. have to need, right? I mean, I think the worst case scenario is if you run out. Yeah. And if we, if we, if you we can't have. You to run out. No, if you have some sitting around and we use it in two years, great, you know. We're ahead of the game there, but uh, I think I would, I would recommend ordering more than you think the maximum is that, that we could realistically need. Do you think, so 40% absentees would be 42,000 absentee ballots cast, and that's 80, or roughly 80, 85,000 pieces of paper. Is that, should that be the number I start with, you think, and order that? That's going to be around $10,000. And this is, okay, what is projected, what is registered voter number, 130,000 or so? 132,000, yeah. And what is... How many folks do you think are going to turn out? So I increased the voter turnout if we did a no excuse absentee voting. Yep. I increased voter turnout to 80%. The reason being is that's reasonable. When you see states that go to a more mail based voting, they have a higher increase of voter turnout. So you're talking maybe 100,000 people, a little right. less than that, possibly? Yeah. Potentially is an estimate of how many folks are going to vote. Yeah. And so that would put our absentee <laughs> ballots at 42,000 absentee ballots. Uh, that no. number just blows my yeah, mind. We don't, I mean, the, you know, it's, we're, it's a difficult number to assess because we're in an unprecedented situation. Totally unknown territory. Unknown time. I mean, what do you guys think of yeah. It's just hard to really even know. I mean, it's a gamble, whatever the number is. I just need my with. crystal ball here. You know. <laughs> uh, you said 40,000 absentees. How many pieces of paper is that? It'll be roughly 80,000 pieces of paper. If at a cost of? At a cost of uh, 10 cents a piece of paper. $10,000? $10,000. 10000 What's in your budget? So, um, <clears throat> I also, though, have to purchase uh, express boat ballot stock as well. Um, I need uh, close to $6,000 for the express boat ballot stock as well. In my general supplies, I have $20,000, and that's typically where the paper comes mm -hmm. from. Um, and then I have, in, under small equipment, I have $30,000 under the small oh. equipment, which would have been for the express, which we don't need for this election. So yeah. 
I have the money in that in that small equipment line item for the paper ballot stock. The paper ballot stock that we order, if for some reason we were to use all 42,000 pieces of it, would be a reimbursable expense. Oh, that's Whatever, I feel like yeah. above the 18, like 2,000 is typically the amount of absentee ballots we would use for a general election. So anything that we mm -hmm. use above the 2,000, we will be able to seek reimbursement for the state, mm -hmm. but we have to purchase it up front. So um, it will definitely be a reimbursable expense on what we do use for this election. So you get what you need. It is. I mean, it's not gonna. It's not gonna be. It won't spoil. Uh, yeah. yeah. This won't. Yeah. Have a shelf life. There's. There, I mean, they're based on that. I don't think there's any reason to try to cut corners on it. Oh no. Let's buy it. What if do you we think? don't need it, we can sell it to another county at a profit. <laughs> hey, somebody run short. Okay, and that's a very real Price thing it. that yeah. Yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Is is counties have had to drive to another county on election yep. day to pick up ballot stock or pick up something that I mean, we do not want to be in we that don't position. Be in no. Okay. I mean, we want to be in the position of helping another county right. if we can. election yeah. if we can. Yeah. Well, I mean, based on that, I think 40% absolutely, you know. Yeah. If you need to if you think there is any possible way we could need more than that, then I, I might recommend even going higher. I defer to you, Jennifer. You know the numbers, you know better than I do, frankly. Even though I'm not trying to put that on you. No, you know? no, this is, this is my <laughs> worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> not having running out of yeah. ballot stock. Yeah. We can order the initial amount, and then I will confirm with what is the turnaround time to order oh, more. Good point. And you know, um, but yeah. Uh, and obviously, in September, we will see, right now, Becky already has an increase in absentee ballot requests. So we already know that that's, that's happening. And we'll just continue to monitor it, and I will order more as we need it. One thing I am going to do is some of the... Uh, some I will some of our ballots I will have pre printed too. So that that will cut that will take away from what we would keep the blank ballot stock. Um, but that also brings me to the point of the extra printers. <laughs> if you'll notice I think it's on thirty seven. I've got a, a bid in here for um, True extra print. printers. So yeah. Max had a great had a great question at our last meeting about the printer. What do we do if our printer? No, I think our neighbor brought that up. I wanted, who I you, that? you pointed up you pointed up though that that being the linchpin. It is. Yeah. Key. Yeah. So I talked to Jerry at ES and S. He actually thinks that um, we need to. He says the printer we have won't be able to handle it as we're getting as we're getting what a surprise <laughs> right thanks jerry and they're willing to sell us <laughs> <laughs> so he, oh. he suggests that we purchase two more printers um to be able to handle the load um i support it it's not i it will be a reimburse reimbursable expense but the SOS is not willing to purchase it in advance for us. So it's like something we will have to purchase and then seek reimbursement for. Okay, what about this setup fee? Yeah, that ignore <laughs> ignore all of that. Okay. We are a PYO okay. county. That's we, what I wondered. Yeah, we're a PYO county, so ignore all of that. So it's okay. the two thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars for us to purchase two and they're just and black and white. Two or is that it's one each? Two. Okay. It's two. Okay. They're black and white. Uh I talked to Becky yesterday. She said, "Why didn't they have just the black and white one when we got it? Because we don't ever print in color, and they didn't offer it then." Yeah. So, fortunately, they do. We don't need another computer because basically we will network the three printers to the one computer we have, and then we'll just run them batches. We'll be able to to run the batches as we need. Um, so yeah. So. 
I put this on here. I will talk to Craig and see like what the turnaround time is, but I didn't know if you wanted to go ahead and purchase. Go ahead and purchase it. I'll I'll make a motion to purchase it. Second. If we yeah. All in favor. Aye. Okay. You need a motion for that ballot stock. You you want us to authorize you to purchase that ballot yes, stock? Yes, that'll be over yeah, yeah. down yeah. I'll yeah. make a motion to. What do we want to order? Forty percent right off the bat. Well, if you if you think forty percent is a reasonable target number, and that's eighty thousand sheets. Let's add ten thousand sheets just mm. for cushion. Yeah, I'm down. Make it fifty percent. Yeah. Yeah, so let's do that. Um, thousand people voting. Let's do it. I mean, scared. No, I mean, I think it's great. And you, you're, but then out of that stock, can you do the printing, the preprint that you need done? I can. Um, <clears throat> yes, yes, I can. So great well, this is, great this question, is Bill. also from ES and S, right? Um, that yes, I feel more comfortable. Normally, I get a lot of our supplies from from uh, Absolute, right. um, but with this quantity, um, I almost, with the ESNS printer, I want to almost just Right, and that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I agree. Okay, now, yeah. so didn't well, mean to interrupt questions. your motion. No, I think it's I think it's great, Bill. I would rather be more prepared and order more rather than less, especially if this isn't something that, ex, you know, expires. That's the whole thing. If it was going to expire yeah. in two years, I'd be going, hmm. Yeah, but it's an unknown thing right. we're dealing with here right. in November. Yeah. We right. don't have a clue. No. We're okay, done. so we've got a motion. I'll, to I'll order amend my motion to order 90000 Fifty percent absentee turnout. Is that what we're ordering for? Forty percent. We want to do fifty percent. And or ninety thousand sheets, whichever comes correctly. As long as we get ninety ninety thousand sheets. What's the ninety thousand going to for for sheets? How many sheets per, per voter? It's Two. So that'd two. be forty-five thousand total absentee ballots. So okay. Okay. Oh, gosh, that's that's All right. Yeah. Um, okay. Do we have, we have a second? Uh, yes. I'll second. All in favor of purchasing the fifty percent uh, ballot stock? Uh, I, I'm not so comfortable saying up to ninety thousand sheets, but it, you know, in that first order, whatever, yeah, whatever is, is uh, the appropriate order on that. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Following that, yeah, let's make sure our procedures are set for <laughs> yeah. to handle that number of people, Aye. right? I mean, we have some time, but uh, that's a significant change of operations if that many voters sure. actually go absentee. Okay, moving on. Um, COVID 19 cost. We've kind of discussed a little of this. We have the one, um, the one thing I think the state is not looking at purchasing for the counties, and I'll have to confirm, is the uh, Freestanding hand sanitizer. Mm, yeah. um, I think they're providing hand sanitizer at all the polling locations, but I don't know that they're that they're going so far as to do the dispensers like on page 40. That's just an example yeah. of of that. Um, I don't know. I can add this to our agenda item on the 22nd when we kind of know what the state is purchasing to see if that is something mm -hmm. we want to. Um, to possibly do. Well, it um, says it's unavailable until, until July. July, so it's not like we can. Yeah, yeah it's not like we can uh, just do that either. But it's but, like the paper. We're going to need it. Yeah, and and uh, you know, I, I kind of think there may be some other vendors that might get into this if they see that this is a this is an area of need. There are, I had, I will look around. The U-line one was the easiest right. one, right. and the, actually, for once, it was actually a pretty good price. If you'll notice on page 39, I've kind of broken down the total cost for things based on the number of polling places open. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, once I get 
information back from the SOS's office on the 22nd, I'll be able to kind of re redo this. This would just this would be if the state didn't purchase any of those things for it. Um, but I do think the state will purchase, will end up purchasing quite a bit of this for us. Okay. Uh, so those numbers will will definitely be adjusted. Yeah, on the hand sanitizer thing too. I mean, I think I would consider dispensing a large amount of liquid in a short amount of time and thinking how often you're going to have to refill. I don't know how big that thing is, but I would think about that. I put you on know. there two uh, refills per site. Um, if, and on the hand sanitizer, I did two per site. Mm -hmm. I think that would be, I think that would be sufficient um, for it. So. We could probably calculate how many dispenses it has per yeah. thing and how many voters are coming in. And you just don't want somebody over there changing it all day long. Yeah. My one job at the polling yeah. station is to change the hand sanitizer <laughs> dispenser. Um, okay. Uh, let's move on. I know y'all are getting a little easy. Uh, general election ballot layout. So, um, Page 41 is our sample ballot for the general election this year. 43 is what we did in 2018. The only reason I'm presenting this to you now is because we're not going to have time to be doing a lot of different tweaks, so I wanted to just go over some of the basic layout to make sure that the commission is comfortable with what we, what, where we're headed with this. Um, I changed the instructions at the top to to be more of the absentee, um, closer, closer to that. The other thing I did was have Debbie uh, do like the two different colors of gray, mm -hmm. and then that way when there's a race that, like if you notice on page 43, that State Senate District 4, mm -hmm. when you look at county, it's like the two whites are together, and so that creates separation so the races are all in the white boxes, okay. basically, is the layout we did. Um, we did the font size of the party one font smaller than the name of the candidate. Is that, I mean, is there any thoughts on that, or does the commission have a, you know, preference on how that, how that looks? I think it looks a little bit cleaner than if you look in from 43 and we had some uh, some comfortability with two with two uh, columns here but I like the three better the three we went ahead and did the three just because um, we did the two last time because we had several candidates we had the one oh, state right. the three report like her name was yeah. so long it would truncate on there this everything fits nice and neat on there um, so I if the commission likes this layout, this is this is pretty much how we'll proceed um, with everything. I was trying to think if there was any other. You're talking about a three column versus a two. It'll column. be a three column. The other thing is, does it bother you that the party is one font one font size smaller than the candidate name? Perfect. I don't know. The only question I have with the font sizes is. I mean, my eyes are fine, but you know, or this, this will be bigger on a bigger oh, paper. Is this a, yeah. Paper, yeah. How big is it going to be? It's a legal size paper. Got what size font are you using? Uh, I think it's ten and nine. Oh, Can you okay. grow it any? If we grow it any, then we run into bigger pro we run into uh, problems. But uh, um, if you if you, I will send this to you as as a single thing. If you look at it on a legal size piece of paper, it's bigger, obviously, than this. This is this is just printed on a gotcha. uh, letter size. Okay, let me ask you this. Just out of curiosity, um, are you able to use black with white lettering anywhere? Uh, or do you think that's too No, um, I don't think we will because it won't pull across correctly, I think, to the express. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, when you, yeah, I don't think we can. Because okay. I was thinking if you just did federal, state, county, and did a white box. Yeah, and did, and, and 
I mean, I, it, there's no reason to mess with things exactly, but the but the various colors of gray. Um, we can go back to so page 43 is when we get to do do that. Oh right. But if yeah. you look at State Senate District Four in that second column, and then the county next to it, is that bothersome? I mean, these are just like aesthetic things. These aren't like you know. We just thought it. Separated, but you, but you are required. If your column breaks, you are required to continue it at the top too, right? No, we. If the column breaks, yes, then the state yeah header will fall over That's to the other I mean, side. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there is some. Uh, I mean, you don't have the ability to play with it as I would. No, no, we can't. We can't like move things like. <laughs> No. It's not like a couple of things. There's certain things yeah, in it. That's a whole that, different yeah. ballgame when you're doing a ballot. Like, yeah, right. yeah. Right. Right. There's some yeah. things we can't control. So do we know how many issues we're looking at on the fall? We're probably five. That's why I think we'll have a two-page ballot. Okay. You know, it would be so much simpler if we just had a one-page ballot. Right. Um, the other thing I wanted to make note of as well. For the primary, we put, um, we were required to put all the unopposed candidates on there. For this election, the only unopposed candidates we're required to put on are state level and above. So there are two, I think there might be three JP races that are unopposed. Mm -hmm. We're not planning on putting them on the ballot. All the constables are unopposed, so we won't put them on the ballot. All the unopposed municipal, we won't put on the ballot as well. That just eats up space. Yeah. Anything I'm below saying. state yeah. office. So as long as the can we is okay with that. Can we notify each one of those candidates, though, so that there's no... Um, oh, so they're not looking for them. Yeah, or, and, and, I mean, it would be good if they told their voters, hey, you're not going to find my name on the ballot because I'm unopposed. Yeah. I'm already won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm already, I've already been elected. <laughs> no, it's over. You know how many voters we have come in and say, oh, I know. I yeah. don't see my candidate on they here. They do. They yeah. do. You're right, Renee. I will. I will but, notify those GPs. But that's an uninformed voter. Yeah. Sure. It's just a courtesy thing <laughs> sure. to them. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason to add those folks. We're trying to streamline processes. It saves money on screening and extra I, pages and paper, and yeah. we've got enough going on with this. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so, uh, you don't have any concern that our ballot with these issues is going to run to three. I hope not. Um, I don't know. Jury's still out on some of those issues. Yeah. I've got a couple partners going to trial on Monday on the oh. ophthalmologist signature yeah. issue. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Remains to be determined how it'll all shake out. Wow. Yeah. But it is what it is. What yeah, it that's true. We can't do anything about it. But yeah. boy. And once we know if it goes to a three page ballot, oh. then we will be back in here saying, authorizing me to order more ballots. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. Good. Yeah. We ordered what we did then. Yeah. yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. If it does, I don't think it will. We did it in 2018, and that was the largest ballot I had ever uh, seen. Yeah. Like the city of Goshen, like where every we had every race on there, um, we were still able to manage it as a two-page ballot. Okay. So, fingers crossed. Yeah. For sure. Anything um, else on this ballot form we need to know about? I don't think so. I just wanted to kind of give you a preview of what it would look like to see if you had any just like, oh, I hate it. Please don't do any of those type of things to it. Um, do you require any action? No. This is, uh, I just want you to just feel comfortable with the, mo with the direction we're going. Yeah, I like what you're doing. I do too. I think it looks good. Yeah, I'm good with it. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll move on then. Any other business? No, other than I would like to try at some point the stylus, just to try. Have you guys, uh, have you guys tried it? I've not. I, I have some like it at home. I don't have a problem I have with the, it. a tablet here. Oh. Yes, and it's on. Can I try it? Yep, there you absolutely. Go. Uh, the, the only other thing I you have might. is um, <laughs> I need a new copier. 
And oh, you didn't put that on I there. I forgot. Okay. Um, but it is the item. same price as <laughs> what I'm paying now. Oh, we lease our property. Yeah, um, and so it's the same price, and it does 11 by 17. Oh, the other one did? The other one did. Oh, it's oh. used, it's, you know, but it's mm -hmm. still leased. But um, if you'll authorize me to go ahead and proceed with getting the new copier, it is the, like a five year lease. Uh, yeah. Three years? It is. I don't know. I'll have to ask her. I think it's a, I think it's a three year. Three is long enough on a crop year. That's yeah, true. Three years is a year yearly. Um, any discussion on that? Are you guys good with it? I'm good. Make a motion that you replace your existing copy machine. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You want me to sign this? Um, I actually uh, see Alicia and then Okay. Sign it. So. Yeah. So this is just a yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What else, Mom? Go for it. Uh, I think that's it, unless you've got something else. That's Max, it. do you have anything else? I got nothing. All right. We are adjourned. Marvelous. Until the...